So my first year was just a big wake-up shock for me, and I was only on the team for like three months, and then it was a mutual decision for me to leave the team. Wow. So my first stand right out of college, bomb, three months. Oh, shit, this is totally different. Right. So now I go to Portugal, and I'm like, you know, I got to pick it up. So I finish out in Portugal. I do my thing, got great stats, all that stuff. And then next year I went to Israel. So now I took it like going to Israel the next year. This is going to be my first start. Okay. And I was just, I just killed it in Israel. My first year I was there. MVP. Nice. I was MVP of the league my first year. The energy in Israel is amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, the That's Israeli awesome. people, the Jewish people over there, the Israelis, they speak English. The weather is like Miami. The food is delicious. Everything, you know, the, the lifestyle is real, real good for Americans over there. That's awesome. I remember you used to be sending me those plates of the fresh fish. Like, it just got the fish fresh out of the water. I'm like, oh, man. I need to yeah, be out there. What look. do I got to do to get out there? So that's awesome. So I know as far as, like, you know, if you're in the States, sometimes, you know, you have a game in one city, a game in another city. You get to come home, relax for a day, and then you have a couple games at home. But when you're overseas – What's the difference? Like, how, how do you, you know, how do you, you know, mentally focus when you're away from your family for nine to ten months out of a whole year? You know, in, in a whole other country, you know, thousands of miles away, different time zone. It might be, you know, eight o'clock in the morning here, eight o'clock at night there. Like, how did you deal with that and, and, and keep a strong family structure? Um, that's probably the toughest thing, especially if you're like a young player, a rookie going over there, because eventually during the season, you'll hit that wall where you get homesick. You right. know, that happens Definitely. to everybody. You, you don't get homesick. So, you know, um, the thing does to have a strong support system. Like okay. I got married to my wife at 21, straight out of college. I got married. That's awesome. So she had a business back home. She did here for over 20 years. One of the best in, in down south in Homestead. One of the best. Shout out to Buffy. And, she allowed she allowed me to go follow my dream to go over there for nine to ten months while she stayed home and she was taking care of her business. Right. And it was difficult. It was difficult, man. It was difficult. But you know, when you both have your goals set, you know, you just got to go out there and accomplish it. So Skype. That's when I first got introduced to Skype. The Skype. So, okay. <laughs> so we Thank was on God Skype, Skype heavy, right? man. We was on Skype heavy. So you know, the Skype definitely does. Like you said, the time difference. Sometimes it's like nine hour difference. Depends where you at. It's right. a nine hour difference. You know, so. You just got to time it. So for me, I stay up to like 4 o'clock, and it's 9 o'clock for her, you know. So that's how we like right. do it sometimes. And we just did it to make it work. And then, you know, eventually it got easier good. and easier. You know, it got easier and easier eventually. What, so what, what did you miss? So besides your family, what, what did you miss the most about coming back home, you know, for, for your month or two? Man, when I was to come home, usually we don't get no breaks. So I'm over there for straight 9, 10 months. Right. So when I first come home, the first thing I'm getting right off bat is that Jamaican food. I'm going to get the Akian salt. Ooh. I'm getting the Akian saltfish right away. Yes, sir. Akian saltfish right away. You know, we get that out of the way. And then, you know, we just come enjoy the family. I go to New York, go visit my family in New York, um, just take little trips with the, with the wife, you know, with my son, you know, Arthur. You know my son. Yeah, that's my guy. Um, we, What's up, Art? We take little trips. This one, he was a baby, though. He was still young back then. So right. we take little trips, you know, Loosen just trying that. to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> we try to hang out, man, spend time with him, make That's sure good. I went to his baseball games, That's take good. him to do little things. You know, that's family stuff, man. That's how I enjoy cool. my summer back then. That's cool. So I remember at, at one point in time, you know, you were playing on one team for a couple months, then another team, and back to another team. So how did that work as far as, like, league-wise, if you're playing in Israel and then you're over in Puerto Rico because – you want to, you want to, I think two championships with Puerto Rico, correct? Am I wrong? Or am I right? Yeah, I won two championships with Ponce, yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. All right. So you won two championships yeah. there. So how did that work? Like, if you were playing with one team and then you go win a championship here, then you go back to this team. Like, did those teammates feel any type of way? Like, why you didn't win a chip with us? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, nah, the, way, the way it works, though, is like, say I'm in Israel for nine months. Okay. As soon as the season's over, then I will come straight to Puerto Rico okay. to continue that season. So usually when I used to get to Puerto Rico, it would be like almost the playoff time. I would get to Puerto Rico, and then I finish the season in Puerto Rico. Right. So that's how it usually works, man. Use a secret weapon. But, Use the atomic bomb for Puerto Rico. <laughs> now, you, you know Ponce, man. Ponce's family. I played on that team now for five years. Right. So that's family right off bat. But, you know, when I come to Ponce now, they already have a good team. 
I'm okay. not coming there to try to score 30 points. I'm just coming there to give them the little, the little push, push they That's need. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. To get over the top. So it's been working for us, you know, two back to back championships, 2014 and 15. Wow, and, you know, every time I go back there, it's always love, man. Ponce is old. You see the shirt I got on right now is Ponce. Hey, hey, I see, I see. That's, that's dope, man. I remember when you won, when y'all won the first championship over there, I seen the picture of you on the back of the, in the back of the drop top, old school caddy, got the trophy up. Y'all got the, <laughs> I was like, all right, look at my guy, man. That's dope, man. Yeah, so, yeah. So the second, another question to add on top of the question I just asked you about, you know, you playing over in Israel and coming over playing Puerto Rico and then going back. What's the different, what's the different mindsets between the coaches of, of the team that you're, you know, pretty much rotating? Um, you got to adjust on the fly pretty much. Cause okay. No, no two leagues or country coaching style is similar. So now right. in Israel, they might have an up and down game. You come to Puerto Rico, it might be a, more set, more running plays, more, you know, it, it's, it's different depends where you go. So you got to have that strong mindset. In Israel, you might have been the man where you take 15 shots, 20 shots. In Puerto right. Rico, they might already have a strong team where you might only take eight, nine shots. Right. So you can't come in there with the mindset like, man, I'm doing this over here. I need to be tech nine. It's totally different. <laughs> it's all about being professional, man. You got to be professional, know the job, accept the job, go out there and do it. Right. So – and so when you're in, so when you're over in Israel, who did you, who can you compare yourself to, compared to being in Israel, compared to being in Puerto Rico? Like, like I know in Israel, like you, you're getting your, you know, your 15 and 15. You know, can you compare yourself to like, a, you know, a, a Tim Duncan or David Robinson or something like that? And then like a Dennis Rodman in Puerto Rico. Like, how did they, how did they fit you into the mix compared to both teams? In Israel, I say I'm more like a KG. Okay, you know there we I mean? go. I like that. Fierce, intensity, off the wall, you know, do whatever it takes to win. Right. And, you know, I used to score more points, like I said, because you were demanding to do more in Israel. Right. When I came back to Puerto Rico now, they already had a strong team, like I said, so they just needed that extra what I brought. So I compare myself to, like, a Ben Wallace now in Puerto Rico. Okay, I like that. I can see it. You know, that, make, that makes a lot of sense. All right, so, so that's dope. So. You've been back home. We've been in quarantine for two and a half months now. What have you been doing to not only inspire and motivate yourself and your family, but to also, you know, keep your fans uh, inspired and motivated during the quarantine? Um, pretty much, you know, we just, um, like you said, um, we just been quarantined pretty much. Right. So we stay home, try to stay out of the way, put on the mask everywhere we go. The, lucky, the good thing about it is um, in our neighborhood, we have a park. In okay. my neighborhood. That's good. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's, it's gated. I don't have to worry about people coming from the outside to the park. It's only for the people that live in here. So right. I go to the park every day, get my workout, get my sweat going. And pretty much with the family, man, go to the park, outside, push the girls. Let, Congratulations, you know, Enjoy them man. walking around. I'm sorry. <laughs> How can I forget that, man? Congratulations on those two beautiful twin daughters you have, brother. Congratulations, man. How does it? I appreciate how, it. How, how does it feel to be, you know, a brand new father all over again? Man, sometimes like, like the son and now two daughters. Sometimes I just be looking at the girls like, man, I'm really a dad, you know. And that's the awesome. things they do every day is something they do something different every day that surprises you, you know. Right, so right. I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm just lucky. We blessed me and my wife. You know, we've been wanting to have kids for the longest, and then it finally happens. Like, oh shit, it's here. The baby's here. <laughs> Got a two piece <laughs> and a biscuit. Yeah, man. Congratulations well, you know, on that, man. I'm always looking forward to seeing, you know. I follow their page, and I like to see their whole personalities, like, since since fresh out, man. Can't wait to come up and, uh, you know, barbecue and just catch up with you, man. That, that's dope. So I appreciate it. So, man, any day now, you know, we could be back out of this quarantine, you know, you know, with the will of God. You know, what is your first steps as soon as we get out of the quarantine? Like, what, what you going to do? Uh, I'm just picking it up even more now, you know, L.A. Fitness, tour days, you know, mm. getting back in the grind of things, getting this cardio back going, you know, getting some of this weight down, you right. know, a little stuff like that, man. Right. And this, you know, I got this you. Pretty you need. <laughs> <laughs> I already know. I already know. <laughs> you fun, already know. Wait, wait, wait. Fun fact for some of y'all. Fun fact. This is my Herbalife OG right here. That's yes, who sir. I signed up on there with Herbalife. Yes, sir. And, you know, what I mean, a couple guys were introduced me to Herbalife. And, you know, what I mean, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure. I don't know if I want to do it. Right. And then I. Coach K ran into me like, yo, come to, you know, I'm doing a little class over here. Come to the class. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, so I, I came over there to remember. the class. 
I sat there. I'm I'm soaking up game. I'm like, oh, he's real intense. He's passionate yeah. about what he's saying. He ain't playing no games. I'm like, you know what? I like I like your energy. And That's then we just been we've been we've been hitting it off ever since, yeah. yeah. We, my man, man, we definitely been rocking and rolling ever since then, man. So y'all definitely when I come up, man, we gotta get a workout in, right? Definitely, definitely. Little, 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 bit, of, little bit of play, a lot of, lot of fun after, right? <laughs> definitely. So, my, wife, my wife told me to ask you for some tea also. I forgot to tell you. She needs some oh, of that tea. You late, man. I already sent it out. <laughs> I already, yeah. Sent, I, yeah, I already sent her some aloe tea and lift off. I don't know. I don't know. I, maybe I want someone to tell you. I guess you got to get your own, I didn't even know, man. you see? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's, it's, already, it's already in the mail. <laughs> all right, so... Can you hear me? Oh, we can't hear you. No, we can't hear you. I think your sound went out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we, we can hear you now. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you got it. Yeah, I think, yeah, we can hear you now. I think you might have to get your own tea now. <laughs> My oh, bad, man, Buffy. whatever turns his mind. Whatever I, I turns his right. mind. I know that's right. <laughs> All right, so which your first, so we get out of quarantine. You said you're gonna go back to two a days. When do your season reback start? Like, are you guys gonna have the season without the fans, or are you guys waiting for it to open back up with the fans, or how are they going back uh, about reopening the season over there? I'm not sure exactly right now. Um, I'm waiting on the Puerto Rico season to start. Last thing I heard, they they might start back up in August. Okay. Um, I just finished in the Korean League two months ago, and they had stopped the Korean League one oh, month wow. before the season was supposed to end. They stopped the Korean League. Wow. So right now, all the leagues right now slowly starting to start back up. I know in Israel, they're starting back up. So that's a good step forward, you know, when other leagues start back up, then, you know, others right. will follow suit. So right now, I'm right. just waiting to hear when they officially want to start back up, you know. That's dope. So uh, as far as, like, working out, like, who do you work out? Do you work out with anybody while, you, while you're here? Like, as far as with your skills and drills, or do you work out by yourself? I'm solo dolo, man. You know, I know solo about dolo. drills. I get on that court. I know where to get my shots up at. You know, I just practice my, my routine, man. I've been doing my routine for so many years. So right. I just go out there in the sun, especially when you get out in the sun, you don't get a good sweat going, you know? Yeah, most, most definitely. So another question. So your teams, all these teams that, you, that you're playing for, what, is, what have been, like, your favorite team that you have played for so far? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. We got um, we got Ponce in here. I don't know. That's a tough one. <laughs> hey, you just you just hey, listen. If he said y'all can't get in y'all feelings, y'all can't get in y'all feelings because you still might be number two or number three. We just want to know. All right, what's your top three favorite teams that you played for? In no order. In no, no order. order. No order. Because we don't want nobody getting feelings. <laughs> we don't. We don't start with Ponce first. You know. Ponce. Um, Shout to Ponce. The, the fans there. there. The fans there are ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. Right. Like the stadium, the arena holds about ten thousand people. Wow. And playoff time. When it comes to playoff time, super packed. You can't hear nothing. They go crazy. Jeez. Some of the best fans I played for. So Ponce is definitely up there. I want to say um a Paul Tel Aviv in um Israel. That's in Israel, Tel Aviv, okay. Israel. Fans or that's the first time I ever felt like the fans were like in the college. Right. So that's my first time really absorbing all the energy it was okay. terrific that was a great year for me and then i would say um probably um france and right. okay that's dope that's all tony right. parker team that's the tony parker oh, that, owner that's that his team. And you, yeah, and you, yeah, yeah i remember you dang that's dope man that's dope yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. if you ever had the opportunity being as though I, I could i'm pretty sure everybody that's watching the podcast right now could feel your energy and feel your passion about playing overseas so before i get to I got two questions. So one, what have, what what city have the best food that you that you visited? I would have to say um back in France, Lyon. That's, okay. Lyon is named. I can't the city. wait to get back out there to get it's, some more. It's considered it's considered like the food capital of Europe. Wow. Wow. So every every corner you go to, there's a restaurant here. The food is real good, man. It's that's real good. good. If you if you ever get a chance to visit, you go. You want to go to Lyon. That's like the that's, second biggest yeah. city in France. If I'm that's not mistaken, on the list. yeah, it's terrific. It's yeah, terrific. that's on the list. This this Europe this Europe uh, tour is on the list. She watching too. I see her right there. She watching. I saw that's, that's, hey, that's bottom, on the list. Bottom tickets right now. Bottom I know, tickets right? right now. Dirt cheap, right? We be the only ones on the plane too. So all right. So hey. this is a question. If you had the opportunity, I love. I know you love playing overseas. Right? Phone ring tonight. You know, 
and an agent called and said, listen, pick a team, any team in the NBA you could play on, and we're going to get you there. Would you go and play for any team in the NBA, and what team would you play for? Um, I would say, yeah, you know, because that's, like, growing up, that's, your, that's a dream for any right. young ball player to play in the NBA. Definitely. So it don't really matter when you're young what team you really want to play for. You just want to make right. it to the NBA. Okay. But for sure, my favorite team I would want to play for, um, I would want to play with Russell Westbrook, man. Oh, I okay. love, I love. That's my favorite play in the NBA. Okay. I love his so, energy. So I love his motor on and, on and off the court. I love his motor, man, you know, right. both ends. He does, okay. he does. He don't stop. He keeps going at you. So that's one of my favorite too. players. I can yeah, see y'all. I can see that. I, I can see it. I can, I can definitely, definitely, definitely see you on Westbrook, yeah. you know, putting in some work together. So as growing up, so we know that Russell Westbrook is your, is your favorite player right now. What was your favorite basketball team growing up? Was it the Knicks? Even though, even Bulls. when they were the Bulls, Bulls. okay, easy one, right? <laughs> I ain't tell the family though. I ain't let my family know. Yeah, you but I know my team. <laughs> so you, have you, I'm pretty sure you've been watching the Last Dance, right? Of course, you, faithfully. So what do you think about that? Like, do you do you, do you see do you see M, uh, MJ and the Bulls the same way you do now compared to you know when we were growing up? The best thing about the the documentary to me is like you get to see a different side of MJ you never seen before. You know right. that's one of the best things. You hear a story about him. Oh, he's an asshole. He's this. He's that. Right. But to be that great and when winning is your number one priority, sometimes different people have different ways of pushing their teammates to get Definitely. the best out of them. And I've seen it personally, you know, it's just different ways. Some guys, need you need to talk shit to them to get the best out of them. Facts. Some guys, if you talk to them too much, they'll shut down. So you got to know different teammates you could talk to like that. Facts. Like in a documentary, you see him talking to Scott Burrell, crazy. Yeah. But he knew, <laughs> he knew Scott could handle it. Definitely. If he talked to Steve Kerr like that, probably it would be a different effect. And so that's, why him him <laughs> that's, that's why I had to tighten him up. That's why I had to tighten Steve Kerr little yeah, ass up. So, different teammates, man. You just got to know how to talk to them, bring the best out of them. Definitely. And that's how he did it in his way. But at the end of the day, what he shows in the documentary is anything he asked from his teammates, he was out there doing it. Doing he can't say, oh, Jordan, Jordan didn't do it. He was right. out there doing it. Right. So, you know, you got to respect it. You got to respect it, man. Is, is that you on your team? Are you the Michael Jordan on your team as far as the enforcer side? You know, stop acting like man. a little bitch. Is that you right there? You, like, you stop can't bitching. Be talking get to them. Your, get you, your ass. You can't talk you can't talk to them Europeans like that, man. They, they're getting their feelings. They get their drink. You gotta talk. To, you can talk to your American, your your American teammates like oh, that. So, you know, so, so like you gotta, I you said, gotta, you gotta, gotta tap them on the you head. You know who like, to talk on, to. Man. I could talk. I could talk to you like that. Cause definitely, definitely. If, if you see me on the court bullshitting, you I'm like, come on, hey, you, you bullshitting right Hell now. Hell yeah, you already know. You know what I mean? So we could we could feed off each other and talk to each other like that. But for right. some of your European teammates, you don't want to talk to them. Yeah, like pull that, them to the side. Yeah, pull them to the corner. Listen, man. Feel what you got going on, but you got it. That's how you got to talk to them. Night, nice and smooth. You, you got to find you got to find a certain way to talk to them. You know, in a different tone. But you know, you. you just got to find a way to 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 get to your teammates, man. Definitely, man. So uh, we're gonna take like five. You got time for like five questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah All right, yeah. guys. So I, light up, light up the questions. We're gonna light up. We have one question right there. We're gonna take uh, like four or five questions. But while you guys are lighting the questions up, so. What's the future for you after basketball? Basketball's over, you're done, you know, you want to retire. What's your next move after basketball? Because a lot of a lot of athletes, they just don't know what's next. And when there's nothing next mentally, that's when we see a lot of things that I'm pretty sure both of us both of us have seen with a lot of athletes when they don't have a plan coming out of playing uh, professional sports. So what what can we see from you after sports? I definitely want to work with the kids, man. That's my passion, just working with the kids. Um, for me, young big men, like undersized big men, that's what I like to work with. So, you know, um, me and my wife, we put in plans together right now to buy a bunch of acres in Georgia. And, you know, nice. I'm planning on building my sports facility oh. out there in Georgia. Okay. And I got I got some plans in there for you, too, because I'm going right. to need you up there with certain things. But, you know, I'm going to put it together no, first, phone, man. Phone you know, put it together, man, where you can have your own land, your own gym. That's one of the things that's big for me, to have my own gym to where I can run my camps, right. run different, you know, programs, and you don't have to worry about your time and borrowing it from somebody, or that's you just want to have my own, you know? That's major, so. man. That's so major, bro. That's awesome. So we got one question. 
All right, have you ever been to Michelin Star Restaurant? From First King of Scott. all, that's my guy. That's my guy, Keem Scott. We played on the Jamaica national team together. Oh wow! My point guard. Oh that's wow! My point so guard. you played for Jamaica me, too? Me, I didn't. I. You didn't mention that. That was what. That's one of the biggest things right there too for me in my career. Dope. You know, I had the chance to go back and represent Jamaica. I got okay. Uter, Jamaica on the front and Uter on the back of my jersey. So that, I need to see that picture. That's, that's huge. But when we talk about motivation, right? I never met nobody. This is my favorite point guard ever, ever wow. playing overseas, ever. Because okay. he's gonna give you one hundred and fifty percent. He's gonna give you one hundred and fifty percent. He ain't gonna back down. And when I tell you, it's motivation speeches before games. Right. Give you give you chills, man. Oh, go to guy. Motivation speeches, man. Yeah, that's it's crazy. Dope. So that's my guy, Scott. Have you ever been to Michelin Star Restaurant? Nah, I don't even know where that is, King. Yeah, let drop drop that. Let let us know where it's at, King. I want to go too now. <laughs> That's dope. Any more questions? We have any more questions? Let's see. Take some more questions. Buffy said, "Cut the check." NBA want a piece. Want a piece of my guy. We need to cut the check. And hey, listen, you just you just throw me on the side. You know, athletic trainer. You know what I mean? I just be walking side by side, which like had Jordan had his squad. You know what I mean? Tell the Russ, <laughs> tell, tell tell Russ to stand to the side. Hold on, Russ. We got he got you got to talk to them after the game or in the game, man. I got you. All right, we got another question. All right, what coach pushed you the most at you? Oh, go figure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you, um, it's definitely Bob. Like Bob told you, Bob used to cuss like a sailor back in the days, man. Like a <laughs> sailor. <laughs> so, oh, we so want to Bob... know the story real fast. So, so we want to know the story about him, that, that time he pushed you. Like, how did you feel about him pushing you beyond limits? Can we hear the story? You got time to tell the story? Yes, I was mad at Bob for at least a month, man. Yeah, I did my whole month. Like, listen, what I was happened? literally like, my, I think I fell in the game on my back. Right. And I wanted to get out of the game. And coach was like, nah, you ain't going out. We can't sub out. Man up. Stop being a, yeah. stop being a B-word. Stop being a B-word. You can curse so, on this podcast. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. So pretty much I'm in pain up and down the court. Right. I had to suck it up because it was a big game. Right. And, you know, eventually, you know what I mean, I ended up with a game-winning um, tipping and all that kind of stuff to win the game. But after a while, I'm like, come on, coach. I'm, I was almost paralyzed. But he said, hey, you could, you could walk, though, can't you? That's dope. So uh, what happened? So he, he, hate, he hated the shot. First, he said he hated the three-point shot, and he hated your tipping and won the game. So what, what happened after that? <laughs> no, he didn't never like me to tip the ball. You know you jump in the air to tip the ball like this. Yeah. He's like, nah, don't tip. Either grab the ball and or smack dunk it. the ball. Right. Or dunk it. Grab it or dunk it. So mm -hmm. pretty much, that was the only thing I could do. Time was running out. So once my point guard missed the shot, the only thing I could do was jump over everybody and volleyball tip it in. So right. when I tipped it in, all I see him is over there. I'm like, <laughs> what happened, Coach? <laughs> coach, why happened? I thought like you don't like this. I thought you don't like this. Nah, I'll take you. But That's dope. With Bob, though, man, Bob definitely pushed me the most because when I got to college now, when I got to the university, right. he prepared me. I, I don't heard every cuss word already. Yeah. So when I got to the university now, You're the, coaches start, the, the coaches start cussing you out. I'm like, man, that's all you got. I don't heard words. I'm good. <laughs> that's dope, man. That's a, that's, a, that's a great story right there. So we have another Definitely. question. Uh, question number three. Do you see yourself teaching your girls the game? Ooh, good question. That's a good one. And me and my wife talked about that. Um, the answer for me, I told my wife, no. Nah. I told her, no, nah, I don't see it because – Basketball is very hard on the body, man. It's hard on the body. It's hard on the knees. Facts. And I, I, I feel like girls have a higher rate of getting injured also. And I don't want to see my girls go through that, you know. Wow. Even though my young one, she every time I have the basketball show, she's around me. She's trying to take the ball. She's trying to dribble. Right. <laughs> so I say, that, I say that now, but it might be tough. But I would rather see them play like um, tennis or golf, to okay. be honest with you. That's good. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. We have any more questions? Let's take two more questions. That's a good one. So what 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 do they like? Like what are they into right now? Are they like pretty much like the girly girls? Do they like the playhouse uh, and the dolls and stuff like that? Every time I so see you, they running around causing chaos. I love it. <laughs> so you know I got twins, so one of them is bigger than the other. Right. So we got Zena. Zena's Zena. the one that's a little chubbier. Right. And then we got Zara. Zara, she just goes. She got she going. She's all over the place. She's climbing couches. She's climbing whatever she could climb. She's climbing. 
Right. Zena, on the other hand, she's like a daddy's girl. She want to lay down. She wants to be. She want to cuddle. She wants you to pick her up. Right. But you know, Zara's the one you got to watch out for. I think she's going to get into whatever sport she has, man. She's gonna get into it for sure. That is dope. But no matter what daddy or mommy say, this is what I'm doing. And then right. we're gonna support her. All right. So Coach Bob said that you're in the JUCO Hall of Fame. You in the JUCO Hall of Fame? Thanks for to Bob. Re Coach for Bob. rebounding. Thanks. Nah, for, I for, score, everything. for, the, for everything, for what I brought to, you know. I'm learning more and more every day. I got the plaque somewhere. I'll show you the plaque one day, but, you know. Please um, do, man. You know, Coach, like I said, man, Coach is one of the most faithful guys, man. Like, this is when I was in Europe. He okay. said, you know what, I'm pushing for you to go Juco All-American. I'm pushing you for the Hall of Fame. And then he just called me one day and surprised me, like, guess what? I got you in. Hey. He, he made, hey. it, he made it happen, man. Shout he out made to it Coach happen. Bob, so. man. Bob, Seems Bob, like man. He definitely person, made it happen, man. man. That's dope. He, 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 he did something for me that's going to always be there that nobody could take away, man. That's awesome. So we have another question. Yeah. If you could play with one person, who would it be and why? I think we – did we answer that? All right, so besides, besides Russell Westbrook, if you could play with any person, like, period, in the, in the history of basketball, who would it be and why? Um, I'm going to keep it well, not with no NBA guys. I'm going to keep it with my boy, Akeem Scott. Okay. Because he's like me. He's a small he's a small guard, and I'm a small big man. I'm right. only 6'6". Six, six, six. And I've been playing a center pretty much 90% of my career. Everywhere I went, I'm playing wow. against guys 6'10", 6'9". That's brilliant. And they're having, <laughs> they're having their roughest night. Right. They're having their roughest night every oh, no, time I they see, play against me. I'm watching know? these videos, man. You was putting these dudes through, through hell, man. You know? I know them so, dudes are ready to go home and say, you know something, maybe this is not for me. <laughs> so, you know, I look at my boy, Team Scott, like he's just a guard version of me. Okay. And he's just relentless, man. He's relentless. I love dope, that about man. him, man. That's dope, man. Shout out to Team Scott, man. You could have named yeah. any NBA player in the history of sports and you decided to name your man. That's, that's dope, man. That's, that, that's dope, man. Bro, uh, listen, man, I'm not going to take too much more of your time. It's a huge... Yo, man, listen, this has been a huge blessing. You know, you're taking time away from your family. You're taking time of, you know, working on your craft, the, you know, spend some time with me on my podcast, episode 25. It's always going to be – it's not just going to be memorable because episode 25 is going to be memorable because, you know, you're one of my favorite people, man. You already know, man. Like, we I always kept a genuine – we always kept a genuine, you know, relationship. You know, even with you, you know, thousands of miles away, we still, you know, was what's happening, sending each other, you know, video chats, sending each other videos. You're sending me, you know, your, your basketball highlights, man. And, and I appreciate, you know, allowing me to be part of your life, man, for so long, man. And, you know, we up north guys, man. We island boys and we from up north. So we, we got the best right. of both worlds with that, man. So uh, definitely right. appreciate right. you having Having you on here, man. Can't wait for you to for the gates to get back cracked, and I can't wait to see you back in action. You know, uh, you, you're definitely a beast, man. You bring a whole lot of perspective to the game, and I and I, I know these young kids is waiting to get. The, That's the what I want to touch on real quick. I want to touch on that on closing on that, man. For these young kids out there listening, um, if you got a goal, if you got a something in mind, you just got to stick to it, man. You right. know, it's not easy out there. It's not easy, but it's not hard at the same time. If you know what I'm saying. If you around, if you have some potential to do something, and you around friends that still want you to do things to get you in trouble, stay right. clear of that, man. Those ain't real friends, cause your Facts. real friend is gonna be like, you know what, you got a chance to do something special. Stay over there while we doing this. We don't need to involve right. you in that. Little things like that, you just gotta be aware of, man. Take care of your your, your books. You're not gonna go nowhere overseas. We talking overseas basketball. You're not gonna go nowhere overseas. If you don't graduate from a university, you don't got Definitely. to. That's something shown you're committed. If you can't commit yeah. to your schoolwork, what team, if you're an owner for team, why would you commit and pursue a player that shows you're not committed to little, little things like that, you know? Definitely. So, just the young kids out there, man. That's dope, work man. hard. That's important. And whenever you can ask for advice, ask for advice from the older people, man. Definitely. So, everybody that's, everybody that's watching this podcast, make sure that you follow my boy, you know, uh, as you see, he's very, very positive, and he ended it off like a lot of – we don't hear a lot of athletes, you know, you know speak the way he, he has been speaking. And you could have said anything that, that end the night off, and you actually spoke about how important it is to, to get that education, not only for yourself to get the education, but get the education for your teammates because if you're not succeeding in, 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 your, in your schoolwork, no matter how good of a player it is, you're not going to be able to play, and your team is actually relying on you. I'm, 
I'm glad that you actually shared that point, you know, because education is, 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 is power if you put it into use, you know. So that, that's important, man. I'm glad that you shared that, bro. Yo, man, I love you, bro. It's been a huge Definitely, blessing, man. man. I can't wait for the gates to crack. We're going to come see you. I'm going on a little road <laughs> trip, man. Come up to Orlando, man, and, you know, and, and kick it with you, man. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. I wish you a thousand years of success. I can't wait to see you back on those highlights, you know, pitting them balls Got up you. in the stand, getting those blocks, letting them know who house it is, <laughs> even if it's their house. Yeah, I mean. Got you. Got you. All right, you. brother, man. Take it easy, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Love, man. Appreciate you, bro. Love. Take it easy. Yep. All right, guys. Listen, I appreciate everybody that logged into the show, man. Some of you guys have logged into the show this morning at, at, at the 12, at the 12 uh, p.m. class, or the 12 p.m. You know, podcast, and now tonight. So as you see, why you see the type of people I'm bringing on here. You see what I'm saying? I'm not bringing people on here just because, you know, they're mastering their field. I'm bringing people on here that don't only just master their field. They have a whole intellectual side to what they do. Bringing people on here that's, that's very, very family-oriented, they're very, very conscious about what's going on around society, what's going on in the world. Just listen, my man done played in multiple, he done played in multiple countries. He have learned multiple cultures. He have ate multiple different dishes from, from these different people, and he's still embraced from all these different people. Not because he's a great uh, he's 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 a great athlete, because he's just a great person. You know, and like Coach Bob said earlier, you know. When you stop seeing color and you stop seeing skin and you start seeing people for how genuine they are and how loyal they are, then your whole aspect of life is going to change. The best thing that ever happened to me is about four years ago when I just start changing my whole aspect of life and I start changing how I see and, and perceive people. And, and that's how my whole aspect changed. So this guy that you have seen transform amongst you, if you guys know me, it all takes place from me just waking up one morning and saying, listen, I'm not going to be like that person I was Tuesday. And then waking up on Thursday saying, I'm not going to be like that person that I was Wednesday. Guys, I have a brand new book out right now. Click the link in the bio. It's called Hype, as you can see, where I get the name from. But it's actually an acronym. It actually stands for Hungry, Young, Passionate Entrepreneur. And I'm not saying that I'm a young that I'm, a, that, that I'm a hungry, young, passionate entrepreneur. I'm saying that everybody that's in my circle is. I keep a very, very tight circle. Adrian Uter, he's in my circle. His wife is in my circle. His son is in my circle. Now I got Coach Bob in my circle. You know, I got DK, my wife, in my circle. I keep a nice, tight circle because I like to deal with people that's very, very intellectual. I like to deal with people that's going to give genuine love back to people, okay? And people know if you fake, if you phony, straight off the rip. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I know for a fact right now, like the, the, the type of circle and the type of culture that I have developed in the past four years, these are the type of people I'm going to spend the rest of my life with because they think how I think. They see how I think. They, they, they see how I see. They hear I, how I hear. And that's why, that's how you build genuine bonds with people, guys. As you can see, this COVID-19 have, have come into our life and have done one or two things into our lives. You know, one thing that did in our lives, it created a whole lot of negativity, a whole lot of hate, you know, a whole lot of, a whole lot of confusion into your life. And then you have these other people that this COVID-19 had brought a lot of positive vibes. It brought creativity to them. It brought drive to them. It brought purpose to them. It brought a why to them. So you have to ask yourself, are you the person that's going to be negative or are you going to see the positive in it? You know, are we losing people? Are people getting sick? Yes, we are. But sometimes you just have to see this as casualties of war. You know, it's always going to be casualties of war when great things are amongst you. Great things are amongst you, but you must have to, and you must have to embrace the, the great things that are here for you. Okay, guys, take this time of being quarantined, locked down during this pandemic. Become creative. Become a better version of yourself. Start reading that book that you always want to read. Start listening to that podcast you always wanted to uh, listen to. Crack that YouTube video open that's going to help you start your own business because at the end of the day, you can use this time to be negative and beat your head against the wall or you can use this time like Coach Bob said, you can bounce off the wall and come out like Mike Tyson swinging like an animal. I'm coming out like Mike Tyson. Brand new book out right now. It's called Hype, Hungry, Young, Passionate, Entrepreneur. That's all I'm bringing on this show each and every single Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. 
I'm bringing you the best, guys. And uh, that being said, I want you guys to all have a blessed night. Make sure you get the brand new book. The link is in the bio. Uh, can't wait to see you guys on Friday. Friday is going to be a very, very special day. Friday, I'm actually having one of my best friends in the whole entire world. His name is Shiz Lansky. He is one of the original Rough Riders. If you know who Rough Riders are, he's one of the original uh, writers for Rough Riders. Okay, one of the original producers for Rough Riders. And he's going to come with that fire. He's going to teach us how he transformed from being a music, mo a music mogul into this incredible entrepreneur. But I'm not going to tell you tomorrow. I'm going to see you guys Friday at 8 p.m. Have a blessed night. Peace.